Okay, I'm going to let you into a little secret that no one on the internet is going to tell you. On a ketogenic diet, you can eat whatever you want. So now I've got your attention, I should probably explain that first comment before the YouTube diet police come after me. Um, oh, by the way, you like the new intro? Pretty slick, huh? So, you can, in theory, eat whatever you want on a ketogenic diet. It's all about amounts. So if you want to do half your carbohydrate daily allowance eating a Mars bar, which will take one minute to eat, and it's just empty calories, then you can do that. So you can eat what you want, but it's all about the amounts. And on that note, Let's get on with today's video, which is a beginner's guide to a clean ketogenic diet. Let's get on with it. Hey, 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 Felix from Fasting for Fitness back again. And today we are doing a beginner's guide to a clean ketogenic diet. Now it's gonna have 10 parts. And the first part is the most obvious place to start. What is a ketogenic diet? Well, a ketogenic diet is basically a diet where you reduce, or depending on your current diet, sometimes drastically reduce your carbohydrate intake, and at the same time, increase your fat intake. So you're reducing carbs that you eat, and you're increasing the fat that you eat. So you wanna have a medium amount of protein. So low carb, medium protein, high fat. And that is the basis of a ketogenic diet. Now, if you do this two or three days in a row, back to back, so lower your carbs, low carb, high fat for two or three days for all your meals, you're gonna put your body into a state of ketosis. Now, what is ketosis? Ketosis is a metabolic state that your body gets in so when it's starved of carbohydrates. So your body utilizes the fat and creates ketone bodies. Now, these ketone bodies, your cells use as fuel. So you're swapping glucose, sugar as your fuel, to fat as your fuel. And that is pretty much it. Now, number two is why should you try a ketogenic diet or why should you be on a ketogenic diet? Probably the most popular one is to lose weight. Two ways, as we just said, your body is in a state where it's burning fat. So you're burning your fat and you'll lose weight that way. But it also works as a bit of an appetite suppressant. You'll be satiated much quicker when you drop the carbs and you'll be full for longer. So as a result of that, you probably will just eat less calories. So your weight loss is coming from two sides, from one side, from the actual burning of fat, and from the other side, you'll just eat less. And now some of the other benefits of a ketogenic diet are more energy and especially steady energy throughout the day because you don't have those post-meal crashes, which is basically a sugar crash, better memory, less brain fog, better mood. It's a great thing to do with intermittent fasting because your body's already used to burning the fat. So if you just skip a meal every day, if you're skipping breakfast every day, you'll find it very easy. That's just a few of the main benefits that I've found personally, but there's plenty more. There's all sorts of health benefits. It does vary from person to person. So I would say just give it a go and see what benefits you get from it. So number Number three is preparation. Before you start your ketogenic diet, you need to do some preparation. The first one, and one of the most important ones, is clear out your kitchen and clear out your cupboards from any crap that you've got there. Sweets, sweet chocolate, uh, sugary cereals, any of that, it's got to go, especially these isolation times. If you're at home, if you're working from home or at home more than you would be, idle hands and all that. So get rid of all the bad stuff. The bad stuff is not only the sweet stuff, you also want to get rid of any nasty vegetable oils that you've got. Uh, sunflower oil, canola oil, rapeseed oil, all those kind of things, they're no good. You wanna get rid of those completely. You can do all your cooking with coconut oil, non-flavored coconut oil, and just normal coconut oil if you're cooking normally Asian dishes, and olive oil. So you only need coconut oil and olive oil. That'll be fine for all your cooking. So you've cleaned your kitchen out of all the crap in there that might tempt you, and you've got rid of all the nasty vegetable oils. Now it's time to head to the shops and fill up that basket. So first of all, vegetables. You wanna buy things like pumpkin, squash, courgette, cabbage, sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, peppers, tomatoes, onions, pickles, cucumbers, anything like that. Basically any vegetable that grows above the ground, you can eat as much of that as you want. So fill up on those things, get all sorts of different ones, all sorts of different colors. You know the drill. Now, the second one is meat. Meat you can pretty much carry on as you are. You wanna eat whole foods, right? So nothing too processed. Bacon sometimes is fine, sausages sometimes are fine, but try and stick to actual whole pieces of meat, whole organic chickens, grass-fed steaks, whatever you like. And the same goes for fish. Fish is great, especially tin fish like mackerel and sardines. Shellfish are great, oysters, mussels, cockles, that kind of stuff. Very high protein, zero carb, really good for you. Spices, spices, go crazy on the spices. You 
can't have too many. If you're already a spice lover, then continue. And if you aren't, and maybe try out some new ones, spices and herbs, add them to all your meals. They're great, they just make it taste great and they give your whole meal a good zing. As I said, for cooking, all you really need is coconut oil, flavorless coconut oil and normal coconut oil if you want to cook some Asian food, and olive oil. That's all you need. You could cook with butter, obviously, but any other oils you can completely avoid. So lots of coconut oil and lots of olive oil on that shopping list. Get them in that basket. Get yourself to the checkout because we're heading home for our first keto cooking lesson. Right, you're back at home. You've got all your new products in. You're ready to cook your first clean keto meal and just keep it something simple. Keep it to something you would cook already. So say like a whole roast chicken. So you can have your roast chicken with some steamed broccoli and roast pumpkin. That is a fantastic meal. If you're a veggie and you don't eat meat, then make yourself say a nice big vegetable stew with some of the vegetables I listed earlier, some that you should have now in your kitchen. You can have pumpkin and mushroom and onions and leeks and all of that in there. Have a big vegetable stew, have a big plate of steamed spinach on the side. Job is a good and easy peasy. Make sure you're cooking with lots of coconut oil. The way I do it really, I cook with the coconut oil and then I'll add olive oil on afterwards. Which leads me on to point number five. Now the hardest thing when I started doing a keto diet is making yourself eat that much oil. We've been taught from a very young age, depending how old you are, but basically my whole life up to 10 years ago, I was taught that fat was bad and that was it. Fat's bad, it's ingrained in us so heavily, so it does take a while to get used to, just in your mind, putting extra fat in your food, cooking with extra fat, adding olive oil onto your plate afterwards. Cook with twice as much fat as you used to. So if you used to cook a dish and start with a tablespoon of olive oil or a tablespoon of sunflower oil, then I'd use two tablespoons of coconut oil. So just double it there and then. Double your fat as you're cooking, and then with every meal, just put a splash of olive oil over the top. Get yourself a good quality one. They taste really nice, and just get used to adding this extra fat to your meals. They're very healthy. Your body and your cells and your brain are gonna love you for it. Point number six, point number six is snacks. Now, if you're a snacker, don't worry. There's plenty of snacks you can have. Stick to a minimum of 85% dark chocolate. Try and get organic if you can, and nuts, as I said in a previous video, not all nuts are made equal. So stick to walnuts, Brazil nuts, pecans, macadamia nuts. Stay away from peanuts, stay away from cashews. You can even snack on good healthy bars. Stay away from ones that are just loaded with dates and dried fruit. These bars are great. The guys at Neuro kindly sent these over to me. Now I'm gonna be doing a whole other video on these Neuro bars. These are actually CBD bars. They're made with all whole foods. Get a bar like this. Have a look at the nutritional panel on the back. Now to work out the net carbs, you wanna look at the carbohydrate amount in the bar. So in this one, we'll pick this banana and cinnamon. We look at the carbohydrate amount, which is per bar is 12.5 grams. And then we look at the fiber, per bar is 3.3 grams. So we deduct 3.3 from 12.5, and we've got what, about nine grams. So nine grams net carbs in a little bar like this, that's fine, that's a great little snack. You wanna be trying to keep in your net carbs daily to when you begin probably between 50 and 70 grams of net carbs per day, maybe more, maybe less, but that's a good place to start. You could easily include something like a Neuro bar into your clean ketogenic diet. And that brings us on to point number seven. And point number seven is booze. Yes, uh, if you're like me, I do like a drink now and again, and it's one of the trickier things if you're trying to stick to a keto diet, because beer, wine, it's all pretty heavy in carbohydrates, pretty heavy in sugars. Really, booze doesn't go with keto, but if you're going to, vodka is great. You can add grapefruit juice or just add it with tonic water. You can make a decent low carb drink with a nice kick to it. So if you wanna just kick back, relax on a Friday evening after work, you can have a couple of drinks, don't stress it. And point number eight, point number eight, when you start out, you really need to get yourself a ketone tester. The best thing I've found is one of these ketone breath meters. If you just eat and wait for half an hour, you blow into it, follow the instructions on the little screen. They're fairly cheap and it'll give you a reading of the ketones in your breath. They're not the most accurate thing, but you can quickly tell if you're in ketosis or not. So you know if what you're doing is working or if it's not and you have to change something. So yeah, point number 
eight is get yourself a ketone meter. Now point number nine, point number nine is don't completely ditch all the carbs. You do need some carbohydrates in your diet. Just make sure they're the healthy ones. Make sure it's not processed sugar. So now and again, have a baked potato, eat sweet potatoes. You can have a small portion of rice with your meal once or twice a week. Don't completely get rid of all the carbs. Root vegetables are good for you, just in moderation. Just don't base your plate on the root vegetable. It's just a balancing act. You don't want to base your meals on those carbs. You don't have a big bowl of rice with a little bit of chicken on the side. It should be the other way around. Have a lot of chicken with a small bit of rice and lots of vegetables. So yes, just don't completely eliminate the carbs out of your diet. Do eat root vegetables, just eat them occasionally. So that's point number nine. And point number 10 is cheat meals. So things like sweets, desserts, sugary chocolate, ice cream, pizza, all that stuff, you can eat that, but save it for one day a week and then go crazy on that cheat day. The chances are it's gonna make you not feel too good. After being so clean and running on fat all week, then you load up yourself with loads of sugar. As time goes on and your body gets more used to this ketogenic diet, those cheat days and cheat meals will get smaller and smaller and they will become healthier and healthier. You might find your cheat meal is a bowl of pasta on a Saturday. And what you will find, when your body becomes fat adapted, you can have those cheat days and within 24 or 30 hours, you're back in ketosis. So I think your body is just able to switch between the fat and the carbs very quickly once you become fat adapted. At the beginning, it's much trickier because you've been, you've been living your whole life basically running on sugar. So it's gonna take a while to get your body used to this fat as a fuel source. Um, but you will find if you stick to it week after week, it gets easier and easier and you're just gonna feel great. So point number 10 is save all the naughty stuff for one day a week or even better for one meal a week. That's 10 tips for your beginner's ketogenic diet. So as I get my jacket on here and my gloves and try and warm up a bit, I've been doing Instagram stories daily this week and I've had a few questions about the New York Yankees beanie. No, I don't follow baseball. No, I don't follow any American sports. I got this New York Yankees beanie in New York City, in Manhattan, um, when my daughter was three months old. Now my daughter is 22 years old. So uh, big shout going out to Noodle. And uh, yeah, this hat is lasting amazingly. It still fits great um, after 22 years. So yeah, that's the New York Yankees hat. I don't support the New York Yankees. It's just a great hat and it reminds me of my daughter every time I put it on, which has got to be a good thing, right? And uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.